This is a 42-year-old gentleman who presents with decreased vision or loss of peripheral vision specifically and headaches. On his MRI scan, there is a large pituitary tumor seen here. Here is a T2-weighted coronal image of the tumor. The tumor is pictured here. There's a cystic component and a solid component. You can see why the optic nerve is affected on the coronal view. See how the optic nerve and the optic chiasm is draped over the tumor? Oftentimes also, the anterior cerebral artery will pulsate against the nerve on the other side and the nerve gets pinned between the tumor and a traversing artery and it leads to loss of vision, in particular peripheral vision. In modern neurosurgery, the primary approach to remove the tumor is through the nose. And we can approach the tumor, remove it, without having to open up the skull and retract the brain. Traditionally, there are two different endonasal approaches to pituitary tumors. One is using the microscope, and the other is using the endoscope. The endoscope is gaining popularity around the world because it allows for a less invasive approach and it allows for better visualization and light to the corners and crevices where there may be additional tumor. And I want to demonstrate that in this video. This is an endoscopic view here. The tumor has been removed and this is a membrane called the diaphragm. The membrane sits on top of the tumor, and then once the tumor is removed, it descends into the field of view. For a large tumor like this, it's important to be able to look around the crevices within the cella at any persistent tumor so that we can remove all of the tumor. It's very difficult to do this with the microscopic approach. So here we are at surgery. We can feel for the presence of tumor, the lateral walls of the cella, which is the cavernous sinus, both inferiorly and superiorly, checking and feeling for any residual tumor. We then can take the endoscope and actually go all the way into the cella and directly view the intracellar contents. The diaphragm is there on the right side of the screen and the lateral aspect or the wall of the cavernous sinus is on the left. And we can visualize whether or not there is any persistent tumor and ensure that we we're able to get a gross total resection. Here's the pre-op MRI to compare with his post-op MRI. The tumor was completely resected and we get this nice view of the diaphragm descended down into the cella. This is a post-operative coronal T1 weighted image with contrast. Before, the optic nerve was compressed and now is completely free. And this is the optic chiasm. And then this structure here is the pituitary stalk going to the gland that is now uh, more easily appreciated on the left side of the cella. There's no tumor here. There is some fat that's been put into the cella to support this diaphragm structure. The patient had a, a complete resolution of his visual uh, deficits and was able to discharge from the hospital the day after surgery.